Here's a question. How many fire drills have you gone through? Probably too many to count on your fingers, right? But how many times have you had to evacuate a burning building? Most of us haven't done it once. So why do we spend all that time on the drills, right? You'll probably never have to flee a burning building, but you know how to do it if you do because you've prepared. Similarly, there are a handful of things in student journalism that will probably never happen to you, but you need to prepare for them in case they do. Police or school administrators will probably never come to search your publication's classroom or your laptop. They probably won't ask you for your camera's memory card or to look through your phone, but they might. And if they're doing it related to your journalism work, you have some protections you should know about. There are federal and state laws, sometimes called shield laws, that protect journalists from search and seizure in many situations. Almost every state has some protections for journalists. They vary from state to state, and you should learn about what your states are. The main federal shield law is the Privacy Protection Act. As always in law, it's complicated. The important thing to know is that student journalists and their publications have some protections. So you and your staff need to know what to do in case of emergency. Let's say police or school administrators come to your newsroom and ask to see your notes or photos or a computer. Maybe they even have a search warrant with them. What do you do? Before it happens, you and your staff need to familiarize yourself with state laws. Learn what protections you have. Also, post the number for the SPLC in the room and put it in your phones. And if you're worried that you're working on a story that might provoke a search, you could keep all the notes and relevant information somewhere other than in the newsroom, maybe someplace hidden. If you do get searched by police, remember these points. Keep calm and be polite, but do not consent to a search. That means that if they ask you, even in a forceful way, to look at something or take something, say no. This is important. Stall. If they have a search warrant or tell you they have other documents giving them permission, ask to read them. Take your time. Check to see if someone in the newsroom or the newsroom itself is named in the document. While one person reads them, someone else can call SPLC and ask for help. Document the search. Take notes. Ask for the names of everyone involved. Take photos and video if possible. Just don't get in the way of authorities doing their job. Note the times and who did and said what. Mention the relevant shield laws that give you protection. Afterward, talk to SPLC about whether the search was legal and how to challenge it if not. You'll probably never have to deal with this kind of situation, but if you do, you'll want to be prepared. For the Scholastic Press Rights Committee, I'm Trip Robbins.